Uh, and now, uh, if any of you have done the Perfect Your Pitch contest, um, the moment you've been waiting for is about to begin. And uh, Carl Quintanilla from CNBC is going to take it from here. Okay, move a chair. Oh. Okay. Afternoon, guys. Good to see everybody. As you uh, may know, Alicia and Alex have been listening to pitches uh, all afternoon, all morning, all afternoon, all day. Morning, afternoon. Afternoon. And we're going to go through some of the lessons learned, highlights, uh, tips before we bring out one person who had sort of a eureka moment of sorts. So it's good to see you guys. Yeah, thanks, thanks for, for doing this. Thank you. Just in general, characterize what you heard today. Well, I think there were a lot of people with really high aspirations, and we talked about strategy, we talked about pitching, we talked about building advisory boards. It was really, it was awesome for me because I felt like I was part of helping them build a better business. And it, was, it ran the gamut, but everyone was really looking to take their business to the next level. Mm -hmm. Alex? Yeah, I think I, I would echo that. And I think, you know, a lot of people at this conference, I was really impressed with the clear articulation of where they want to go. You know what I mean? And I think that's very, very important. You know, it's one thing to say, here's who I am and here's what I've been doing. But I think in business, and especially when pitching, you know, it's really important to also t weave that together into what's the next step. And right. I heard a lot of really, really uh, inspiring examples of that today. That's, that's great to hear. We, you got, we've assembled some of your three top tips coming out of all of this. Alicia, we'll start with you. Okay. The first thing you say is don't be too salesy. Yes, yes. <laughs> what, what does that mean? <laughs> Well, there's a couple of things that that can mean. First of all, I see a lot of entrepreneurs pitch me for fundraising, and a lot of times they'll put unnecessary pressure on you to make a decision where they're like, if you don't invest now, the opportunity won't be there tomorrow, or like, you know, or we promise you this amount of returns. That just doesn't, doesn't really work, because as an investor, you see hundreds of opportunities, and if you have any kind of unnecessary pressure, it's just easier to pass So you're on. not gonna be fooled by supplies are running out. No, no. And I think, in fact, if that's not true, it really hurts the credibility of an entrepreneur. So you have to be really careful about that. Just be authentic, be credible, be truthful. Right. That goes a long way. To that same point, yeah. you argue, don't say there's no competition. Yes, because that can come across as naive. I think a lot of people know that. And in fact, I was just listening to the CEO of Netflix, uh, Reed Hastings, talk about how even sleep is his competition, right? So even he says, you know, without like a, another kind of Netflix on the market, sleep is his competition. So it's basically anyone who's doing something similar to what you're doing, any other competition for the consumer's time, you know, anybody who could be moving into your market that's a big player, but there's always potential for competition. So you just have to be honest right. about that. Without uh, talking your way out of your own pitch, right? I mean, right. you don't want to throw cold water on your sales pitch. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, give them an investment pitch, not a product pitch. What's yes. the difference? So from an investor perspective, when people are pitching us for funding, oftentimes they spend way too much time talking about the product, the features, like as if they were trying to get us to buy the product. But as an investor, I'm interested in the company holistically. So not only do I want to know what you're selling, but I want to know the size of the market. I want to know your competitive advantage. I want to know the team behind it. I want to know your marketing plan, your fundraising ask, what it goes for. So it's really that holistic view of the company and the investment opportunity into the company. Mm -hmm. Alex, you say be specific, number one. Explain that. Absolutely. I mean, you know, there are so much you can, you can say so little with so many words. It's amazing. You know, there, you know, word salad has become like a language almost. Do you know what I mean? And, you know, it, it happened, you know, today several times. You know, people said, you know, they, they, they talked about the industry they're in and the, the opportunity and how big and how they're going to disrupt. And I'm like, I, I, I got to stop you there for a second. What exactly are you doing that's different? Why are you, are you here today? And it's like, oh yeah, right. Uh, you know, this is our this is our angle. So it's a, it's a bit of a backup, and walk me through the, the beginning of this story. Yeah, in a sense? I think so. And I think because the danger is, if you're trying to use, if you're trying to make yourself look like you're everything, then really you're nothing, right? And so if, as an investor, I'm sitting there wondering, is this person you? Is, are they not being specific enough because there's just nothing there? Or is it just because, well, you know, they just haven't really refined it? And hopefully it's the latter. Mm -hmm. Number two, pitch the deal, not the business, is sort of an echo of what Alicia just said, right? Yeah, very, very much so. And, and, you know, it's important to put yourself in the investor's 
shoes, right? I mean, it's nerve-wracking to deploy capital, right? You don't know if it's going to come back or what or on what terms, right? And so while I understand that in many cases when you're pitching, you don't yet know what the investment would look like, you know, I'd like to see that you've given some thought to, you know, is it, are we going to, is it because we're going to exit one day? Is it because, um, you, you know, we'll start paying dividends? Something, show me that you've at least imagined yourself as an investor because otherwise, like, like uh, you know, I don't, uh, I'm not going to get very comfortable warm and fuzzies if, you know, you haven't even turned your mind to that. Yeah. It's hard because as an entrepreneur, you get a lot of practice making sales calls, yep. right? You get a lot of practice pitching the product. Mm -hmm. it's hard. You, don't, you don't get the reps when it comes to pitching investments. Sure. But, you know, the good news is that information is out there and it's not nearly as intimidating as you might think. I mean, you know, an afternoon on YouTube, you, you could figure out the key pieces. Yeah. Finally, be authentic. Very much See, so. It sounds so basic. It does, and yet, you know, people don't feel comfortable getting out of sales mode. And it's weird because you are selling, so I'm not going to say don't sell, you should. But if you're going to tell me that there is no weakness to your business model, there's no competition, you're perfect, you have no gaps, like, are you kidding? Like, I, I, I'm, I'm already gone at that point, right? Like, like, give me something, be honest with me, like, oh, you know, we made these mistakes, here's what we learned. You know, we're really good at this, you know, but yeah, we acknowledge that here are some gaps or, and, and whatever that is for you because that is powerful because, you know, you got to understand how many people just walked through the door earlier who didn't do that and like, you know, it's very disarming when you actually, because look, everyone's got some weakness, right? Do you, would you advise people to volunteer that in their initial presentation? I mean, not, not in the first sentence. Or, right? or do you wait for it to be challenged? No, I mean... Yeah, great question. Yeah, don't, definitely don't lead with that. <laughs> but if I ask you, hey, you know, it sounds to me like you, you, you're maybe missing a key technical person, let's say. You know, if that's in fact true, a very good answer would be, you know what, Alex, you're right. Um, here's what we're doing to address that. But yeah, that is a gap right now, full stop. That's actually much more powerful than you might realize. Finally, I just wonder, how many pitches can you listen to in a row before it just starts to all bleed together? I like them in chunks of four to five. Four to five? Take, yeah, and then take maybe like a, a little bit of a break in between. But then it, throughout the day, I could probably fit in 20 if I tried, yeah. Right. But it's to your advantage, I imagine, to be first, I assume, in mm -hmm. a long line? I I don't know. I actually, so when I'm, I'm on the board of New York Angels and we'll have pitches throughout a whole morning, maybe it's like 12 to 16 companies. And when portfolio companies ask me where they should pitch, I often say the third or fourth because people often don't show up on time. And by the time they kind of get settled and their full attention, the third or fourth time slot, I think is one of the best ones, but that's just my bias. Alex, you agree? I agree, and I think, look, just you know, a little insider tip here. You want to, if, if faced with the choice with being right before lunch or right after lunch, you definitely want to be right after lunch, right? Because, you know. Well, of all the pitches you heard today, um, we're about to hear from one gentleman who gave one, Daniel Jennings, um, who's going to join us on stage really quickly. Daniel, there welcome. You know Because we weren't in the pitch, explain what you said. Yeah. To Alex. Um, basically, it was just telling him about a small batch coffee roasting business that I started in college. Um, when it came to pitch to him, I was kind of all over the place. I uh, was very timid at the start, and he kind of stopped me just halfway through. was like, Daniel, just relax. Go ahead and get the pitch out to me. Um, though by the end, he really helped me out with basically staying concise with the pitch. I was, like I said, all over the place. So what he helped me with was when pitching to investors or anyone, focusing on just a few aspects of the business, the key aspects of the business. So what the key aspects for our coffee roasting business are is the educational aspect of the business. So we want to educate the consumer on why our coffee is the best coffee. And the other aspect of our business is the freshness of the coffee, um, which basically freshness in coffee roasting is extremely important because it's going to provide you with a clean cup of coffee, won't be bitter or tardy when it's going down. Mm -hmm. Alex, talk about what you heard from him and what you think the next person who hears his pitch is going to hear. Um, it's a tragedy that people across this country are drinking coffee that is not fresh. It's awful. <laughs> and Daniel is going to rescue Americans from this travesty one 
cup of coffee at a time <laughs> in a subscription service. And not only that, but when you become his customer, you're also going to get an education out of it so that by the end, you can be a connoisseur just like he is. And they will also curate and help make the vast number of choices out there easier to digest and understand. <laughs> okay, very nice. And before we let you go, you're in your, you're in your junior year? Yeah, in junior college? year of college, yep, over at Muskegon <laughs> University in New Concord, Ohio. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, right. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Daniel, thank you for being here. Yeah, thank First you and so foremost, much. thanks for coming awesome on stage. Such a good sport. Uh, Alicia and Alex, thank you guys for your time thanks too. For Tell them Appreciate your URL, it. man. Yeah, so it's JenningsJava.com. We, like I said, are very focused on the educational aspect. So you can read blog posts on JenningsJava and Dot coffee com. in general. Dot com. JenningsJava.com. <laughs> Big round of applause for Daniel thank and you. Alex and Alicia. Thank you guys. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.